With the new content aware from Adobe, I just had to revisit one of my most popular videos, which was how to remove a blemish on a subject's face. Now, the old way of doing it was within Premiere, and you essentially use Gaussian Blur on just the offending area, and then you uh, track it around the, the frame. Now what we could do is, this is an After Effects, so if you're not used to After Effects, I will walk you through nicely, but here's how it works. Let's throw a, another little mark on my face. Hopefully it wasn't too crazy. Oh geez, how big is that? Okay, again, I exaggerate a little bit with the size of it, but if uh, it can clear this up, then it can clear anything up. So check this out, don't blink. That's pretty good. Not just on a static object, but let me move around. Now let me show you how I did it. First things first, bring your clip into After Effects. Right click, new comp from selection. And here you are. Now let's fast forward to right when I snap my fingers is when I want the effect to take place. So let's take a look at it right about here. And let's zoom in a little bit. I'm using my scroll wheel. Okay, so we're going to grab the pen tool. Now I need to be selected on here. Like you have to actually have the clip. You know, you have to click on that to make sure that this is all set the proper way. Now we're going to just do a little outline here. Okay. That looks disgusting. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, let's twirl this down here. Masks. And instead of add, we're going to say none. So right now you can see uh, the outline here. What we're going to end up doing is uh, we're going to say subtract and then that creates a mask, and then you say generate fill layer. But what we need to do is, because I am moving here, we have to track the mat manually, unfortunately. So here's how, it, for now at least. So first, instead of say subtract, say none, so that we can see what you're working with. And first off, because uh, there is a snap here, let's look for that in a timeline. So snap right here. Okay, this is where it should start. So let's twirl down the mask. Mask opacity, we're gonna click here to create a keyframe. And it's at 100% here. But the frame right before, like the frame right before, we're gonna create another keyframe and say mask opacity is at 0%. So here, up until this point in the timeline, the mask will not be activated. It's after this point, after I snap my fingers, right here. That's when the mask turns on. So let's zoom back in here and take a look at tracking the mask. So mask path, click on that to activate the keyframe. And that's the very first keyframe. Now, if the movement is smooth, you don't have to go frame by frame. You can kind of go a few. So right about here, it's still good. Okay, now I'm gonna start moving. And unfortunately you gotta move this thing it's quite laborious to move this around each time. Okay, that creates another keyframe automatically. All right, let's see that motion there. Okay. Now I'm gonna fast forward this so you don't see, have to see this whole thing, but this is the idea. You do have to move this manually uh, around. So I say fairly static here, and then in the moment I start bouncing around a little bit just to kind of prove you know, how it works when there's the motion involved. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this part. All right, I've taken time to track this mat around the frame. Now here's where the magic happens. First, go to mask, instead of none, say subtract, that creates the mask. Oh, uh, it's all black now because remember I said I want the mask off at this point until I snap my fingers and there's the finger snap. So right here it's, it's black. Over here where it says uh, alpha expansion, first off it's, it's at zero right now. Because I cut it pretty close to the edge of the simulated blemish, um, I want it just, I want it expand that alpha just a little bit. What that does is basically feathers it. So it kind of brings it a little bit further out of the face. So it's gonna be very, very subtle. Let's do maybe like three on the alpha expansion on that. For a fill method for this particular situation, we're gonna bring it down to edge blend. And we're gonna go ahead and generate the fill layer. Now, depending on the specs of your system and how complex what you're doing is as far as the size of it, uh, the length of the clip that you're fixing, uh, this can take various amounts of time. Okay, <laughs> we can already see first pass, this thing looks really, really good. And of course, I'm zoomed in at 
Looks good. Let's zoom back out to a normal amount. Yeah. That's pretty good. Not just on a static object, but let me move around. Now let me show you how I did it. Look at that. And you know what to look for and you still can't see it. Okay, now let's push the limits of what it can do. Let's go a little bit crazier. This will be fun getting off later. It is a dry erase marker, but I remember last time it was a chore. All right, let's get rid of this. All right, again, let's do that mask right from when that snap's happening. <laughs> Jesus is haggard. And if right now it's trying to draw a shape, if you're getting color inside of it, things like that, common mistake, don't worry. Uh, just undo it because it's going to create a new shape layer on top of here. Just delete that. What you want to do is make sure that this clip here is selected when you're doing what I just did. Again, let's drop this down. Masks. Add. Let's say none. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Yeah, where's the snap? So, mask. Mask opacity. At this point, I want it at zero. I still want it at zero. There we go. I want it 100%. This one it appears. Cool. Not attractive for the rest of the clip. Okay, again, make a new keyframe. Mask path. Click that. Go forward just a little bit. Same deal, so go right back to when it starts. We're gonna say, instead of none, subtract, edge blend. And again, with the alpha expansion, again, because I cut this a little bit close, let's keep that right around three um, and generate fill layer. Obviously a very, very powerful tool, as you saw. As of this recording right now, Adobe does not have automatic tracking of that mat, but I presume as I'm sitting here recording this, standing here recording this, um, Adobe is, I'm sure, hard at work on that. So in Premiere, you can just hit you know, play and it will automatically track the mat. In fact, recent releases, it's gotten even better than what that original video I shot showed. Um, and I'm sure that uh, before long, Adobe will have this for After Effects as well. Check the description in the link below to see if uh, there has been an update. I'll be updating the description um, as these things happen. If this video just saved your butt, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you next time. Bye.